Hello everybody, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're joining us today for our online worship. I am in Yambio, South Sudan. This is the classroom of the Concordia Lutheran Institute for the Holy Ministry in Yambio. It's the seminary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in South Sudan and Sudan. I've been here for a couple of weeks to work with the men and helping them understand theology and, and the importance of um, Christ and his holy word. Um, this week at Trinity, what we're going to be focusing in on is we're going to continue with our study of 1 John, and we're going to look at a word that John loves. It's the word love. And he uses a very specific word for love that teaches us about God's love in Christ. And then through faith in Christ, that kind of love is seen in our lives as we love our neighbor. And so we're going to work through that idea of loving one another as Christ has loved us today, especially focusing in on that special word that John uses. We're glad you're with us today. God's blessings to you. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Jesus Christ. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship today at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today comes from the New Testament, 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7. St. John writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and this is the familiar verse where St. Paul talks about the love of God. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, 
it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. But now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, starting at verse 9. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue now by confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My only hope is Jesus. Through his blood he shed for me. Though the earth pass away, this truth will remain. My home is heaven. My healing is the cross. And my hope, my only hope, is Jesus and I will savor the hope in the grace he gives to me I will seek the hope for all eternity I will show the hope to those who have not seen so others can declare triumphantly My only hope is Jesus Through his blood he shed for me Though the earth pass away This truth will remain My home is heaven 
My healing is the cross, and my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. And I will share the hope with the lonely and the lost, and support the hope. No matter what the cost, I will shout the hope, Hosanna to his name. With the choir of heavenly hosts proclaim, my only hope is Jesus. Through his blood he shed for me. My healing is the cross, and my hope, my only hope, is Jesus. In the New Testament, the loftiest word for love is called agape. That's the Greek word that describes God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And this Greek word for love at its core is the idea of sacrifice, giving up for someone else. In the Greek language, there are several different words for love, each highlighting a different kind of love. For instance, there is a specific word for, for friendship and that kind of love between friends. There's another word in the Greek language for the love of family, the love that exists between parents and husbands and wives and children. There's another kind of word in Greek for romantic love. And there is yet another Greek word for passion. All of these words describe various aspects of love. And the common thread between them all is that it's all subjective. They all define love from your point of view. It's a, it's a self viewpoint, where you're getting something back from the other person. What sets the New Testament Greek word agape apart is that it's a different kind of love. It's an objective love. It's not about you. It's about the other person. It's other-centered rather than self-centered. It's concerned about giving and helping and not about receiving or getting. Its focus is on the other person and it makes sacrifices for them. This is how God's love for us is described. And when it's used to describe our love, it's a work of the Holy Spirit, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it's the work of Christ in your life. The Apostle John loves this Greek word agape, this other, this other person kind of love, this, this other centered kind of love. And he uses it frequently in his writings. We heard about it today in both the Gospel of John and the First John scripture lesson. Here's two examples from First John chapter 4. By this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God the Father sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. 
This is the love of God. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only son to be the propitiation for our sins. All of these, all these words for love in the Greek language, the original language of the New Testament, is agape. They're teaching us that God's love is other-centered. It's centered on us. God's love is busy and it is active for us. And when you think of God's love, God's love for you is always seen in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the ultimate sign of God's love to the entire world and to you personally as well. No matter how you think about God, no matter how you think about his love for you and his work in your life, it will always lead you back to his son, to Jesus, to the Christ, to the Savior of the world. Every time and in every way, God's love always circles back on the Lord Jesus Christ. God's love for you comes through his son, Jesus. And in these verses that we just heard, God the Father is demonstrating his love by sending his son Jesus into the world. This sending of the son reminds us that we need God the Father to send a savior to us and for us. We needed someone to rescue us from our sin. We needed someone outside of us to rescue us and to save us. Someone to do the work of salvation that we are unable to do. Your sin separates you from God and it leaves you spiritually dead. Without God's help, we have no hope whatsoever of surviving death or escaping the final judgment. So God, in his agape love, sends his only begotten son into the world for you. Jesus comes into the world born in Bethlehem. He lives a perfect and holy life for you. He faces the wrath of God for you and your sins. And then he dies a sinner's death on a cross for you. He's done the work of salvation for us. This is God's agape love for you. On the cross, you see God's love and care for you. He sent his son knowing that he would be a substitute for you. The sacrifice who gave his life for you. That's God's agape love. He's thinking about you. He's doing something for you because he loves you. Now, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father showers you with the gifts of salvation. You have eternal life through the Son of God. Your sins have been propitiated. That's one of the words that John uses today. That means that the wrath of God has been satisfied in the death of Jesus. You will never see the wrath of God. You will only receive the grace and mercy of God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is all part of God's agape love for you in his son, Jesus. If you want to understand the agape love of God, then look to the cross. Jesus is the love of God. Jesus is the agape love of God, whose sacrifice reconciles you with the Father and gives you eternal life. God's love for you is always seen in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And now, because you know this and you believe this, you trust God's agape love for you in the Lord Jesus? In faith, you are now empowered to love other people with an agape kind of love, with, a, with an other-centered kind of love, rather than some kind of a self-centered type of thing. Here's what John writes. We love because God first loved us. And we heard Jesus say this, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, as if you have love for one another. God's love transforms you. There's something different about you. You have spiritual life. The Holy Spirit lives within you. You are now able to love other people, to help them, to make sacrifices for them without thinking about anything in return. Your love for others is motivated by God's love for you in his son, Jesus Christ. John summarized it very succinctly when he said, we love because God first loved us. If you were to look at that verse in the Greek language in the original New Testament, it says this, we agape because God first agaped us. Love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. St. Paul talks about this agape love that God shows us and that we show others in 1 Corinthians 13. We heard it today in our scripture lesson. These verses are probably familiar to you. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. In this passage, agape love is being defined. Agape love is described by using 15 different verbs. Love is an action word. The Bible tells us exactly what love looks like. Love is active and it is busy and it takes hard work. In this passage in 1 Corinthians 13, there are two key words to describe love, to describe agape love for other people. Patience and kindness. And then it's clarified and expanded with the 13 other verbs. But the place to start thinking about loving one another is with these two words, patience and kindness. Love is patient, love is kind. That is the core of loving one another. That is loving others as Christ has loved you. Loving other people with this God kind of agape love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit at work within you. It's a response to faith in Christ. And it helps your neighbor and it glorifies God. For the Apostle John, love is a summary of the Christian faith and life. God loves us in a self-sacrificial way when he sent his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross to be our savior. And then we respond in faith 
in response to the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we respond by loving others the same way that God loves us, with agape love. Today, may the Holy Spirit give you both faith to believe this and the power to put it into practice. We love because God first loved us. Amen. We pray. God the Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus into the world to be our savior. We thank and praise you for your love for us and all men in which you have rescued us from sin and death and have given us forgiveness and life. Send your Holy Spirit so that we may love our neighbor as Christ has loved us. Help us to glorify you by loving our neighbor and showing ourselves to be your disciples. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Christ crucified, Christ crucified, in this place we proclaim Christ crucified, we were dead in our sins, but we've been made
Christ crew.